Hi there, folks. This is Andy Toth. I am the Artistic Director of the Robert M. Lettingham School of Theatre, Film and Music here at Arts Umbrella. Uh, excited today, really excited because in a few moments we get to speak with Kaz Holman. Uh, Kaz is an award-winning designer, uh, toy designer, who uh, lives, works, teaches in uh, New York City and has decided to join us as we unpack and open up our ideas around creative design and creative learning for young people and design learning for young people. Uh, we're excited because it helps us build foundations for our stagecraft programming uh, so that we can see little people in the shop doing shop things. Uh, and, um, and hopefully it opens up avenues for little people to come into our spaces and recognize they have a creative voice that can turn their ideas into functioning things. Uh, so we'll be looking at that with Kaz, looking at those ideas, and looking at Rigamajig, the toolkit that we use for our creative design programs. Thanks, folks, for joining. Um, um, and big thanks uh, to you, Kaz, to you, Amanda, uh, for your team for taking the time and making the time to jump on with us. Um, we're really excited to be able to be starting to work with the stuff that you've provided and uh and really excited to hear your perspective of the stuff that you provided and and to be able to find a way uh into this so we have just as a context uh we have our creative design classes running on saturdays and sundays and we're trying to to support them getting off the ground when i saw the the netflix program that introduced me to you and your work and uh and i thought well that's amazing because that's a exactly what we feel like we're missing as we start looking at what is design thinking for stage but also design thinking in general look like at two and three years old and four years old um and mm -hmm. how do we as arts umbrella get behind that and then just when everything resonated it just made sense to 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 a bring the product in and, and you were kind enough to, to offer to jump in so we're, we're really thrilled yeah. to have you Kaz, what um, I, I i've seen you talk about this uh on youtube and also on um uh, on that Netflix special, but what led you into this design path for you, for designing uh, toys and, and uh, experimental pathways for, for little people? Um, yeah, I was, uh, my, my background is, is pretty diverse. I've had a lot of adventures. <laughs> um, everything from, I was a chef for many years and, and was on the line and then did pastries um was in the uh in a in a bakery for a little while so over the course of about eight years was cooking in various capacities and um i was a research assistant at some point working in the galapagos islands chasing iguanas for a year and a half that was pretty wonderful uh, i came out of cooking and and was working for a um like a high-end furniture company and not on the design side but kind of realized like oh i could bring together my um you know, the need to to support myself and um, my creative skills and kind of shift my art making from art into design. And so I went back to school um, and I went to Cranbrook. And while I was there, a lot of my sculptures that were kind of interactive or closer to furniture um, wound up being, um, well, they were all playful, but they wound up being actually played with by children at the, at the Cranbrook Museum. And that's where I kind of observed that and kind of said, oh, wait a minute, this is pretty special. Like this is, feels amazing. Um, the, in particular, uh, the thing that I was designing at the time, which became GMO, um, originally had quite a few more parts and pieces to it. But I really, um, it kind of gave me the excuse to look closer, more closely at, at the way that we design for children. Cool. And kind of like say like, wow, there's a big opportunity here. I, 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 um, I'm not finding a lot of good stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, and by good, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't finding things that were open-ended and things that really invited children to be creative in and of themselves. Most things I was finding, and I think still is this the case with toys, a lot of things kind of deliver children the complete story and they kind of like don't let children participate in design or participate in being creative or inventing the story or figuring out how to use it. And so, um, yeah, that just kind of clicked and I, and I jumped in and it's, it's been 20 years now. What is it about how they interact that excites you? Yeah, I think um, every project kind of gives me a different opportunity to kind of learn more or dive deeper into the research or, or tap different colleagues of mine who specialize in early childhood development or different kind of different needs, right? Conflict resolution was a project I worked with 
um, uh, worked around in with the Anji Play Schools in China for a little while. We were kind of designing mm -hmm. for conflict resolution, which was interesting. And I've worked with other um, people around like impulse control, right? So it's never like, design a new ball <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> design a way or right now i'm really interested in how rigamajig is being used for socio-emotional skills and different ways that because it's so large the one behind you the, the basic builder it mm -hmm. really facilitates collaboration and cooperation in a way that's much different than other toys or much different than smaller building sets right like so i think from a from a play value perspective um, there are a lot of toys that do what what Rigamajig does, you know, in terms of that they can just they can invent what they're designing. They they build from their own imaginations. They don't need instructions, all of that. But I think what's really unique about both of Rigamajig Junior and Rigamajig is just the scale that they they need each other, right? And I think um, historically the the kind of toy industry has 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 avoided things that are difficult, right? And I think it's often mm -hmm. called friction. In the design mm -hmm. world, we call it, designers think of like, no, you avoid friction. And I think like life has friction. And for children, like childhood has friction. And so not giving them opportunities to really like sit with something that's hard and figure something out and maybe even struggle a little bit is okay, right? Absolutely. And a lot of the schools that we're working with, um, uh, and Jane is, has been hearing about this more and more, like they're really trying to um help children develop the skills to to cope with communicating yes. communication is hard and a lot of kids just had two years time out from needing to communicate Absolutely. really well with with other people they don't know so yeah um so yeah there's a lot of every every project kind of brings a, a new um excuse to dive deeper into understanding more about the way that children's brains develop and bodies it speaks directly to something that shows up for us, especially in performing arts, right? Where we've got several programs running from, from 2 to 22, but in all of them, um, people are showing up with different levels of experience, trauma, and different levels of, of understanding their place within the, the, um, the enmeshed art form that is performing arts. Um, and so, uh, and what I've always been clear about and tried to been clear, try to be clear when the kids are old enough is that this is all just a great big made up exercise in, in feeling your way actively through discomfort. Like they're all, you know, this is all yeah. fake stuff that we're all folding together, but it, it's, it's actively managing uncomfortable places so that you can be just a little bit more curious than you are afraid. And I feel like and mm. we were finding that as we were building, you know, what is the stagecraft program for youth going to look like? And when, and, uh, you know, this, this locked in perfectly around that because it, it is that it is highly collaborative and it means that you need to get your hands in into the doing before you know what done looks like. And that's really mm -hmm. exciting. You know, that's, that's really, really exciting for the, for the thought process for these littles for me. Yeah, that's amazing. very well put. I like the idea of being more curious than afraid because they, yeah. they often both go together, right? Uncertainty yeah. is, is is a part of life so that's really well put in your uh or your frame of reference if you've come across any organizations in north america that you feel are doing what we're talking about here and, and creating more curiosity uh and, and tools to be in that space uh, of discomfort um are you recognizing that there are institutions that are doing well and there are institutions that really aren't doing well? and, and you know uh, perhaps without naming them what are those institutions doing with rigamajig or other things that you find uh, effective and inspiring? We're working with one school who um, specializes in children with language learning differences. It started as like they specialize in children with dyslexia and it's much, it's a bit broader now because mm -hmm. they understand that cool. even dyslexia is such a huge spectrum that they, um, and they, they are doing kind of what I described, which is setting up um, kind of building scenarios that are hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? um, and so using rigamajig in ways that really, really um, challenge the kids, like it puts them in a situation where they're doing what's hardest for them and then helps them make it less hard. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they have uh, language pathologists who are helping with that. Um, 
and they're seeing what's nice about that is that they're seeing um uh, the impact, not just in that, the specific exercise, like they've done it three times. And by the third time it was much easier, or they were less mm-hmm. frustrated or, you know, they, they, they see their executive function staying on board instead of shutting down. Right. So all of the, cool. so there's the, but, but what they're seeing is that, that in other classes or later when they're at lunch, they're seeing children getting along who didn't get mm-hmm. along before and that mm-hmm. who were together through this kind of the struggle of um, of this exercise. And I don't want to don't mean to frame it as like that all of it is hard, right? Like they, they're in the struggle together. But then with because this is all happening in play with rigamajig, yeah. which like it it is, um, I would argue it's challenge the, using the material is challenging, but not frustrating, right? Like it does work like you can mm-hmm. within a few moves make something that is, if you're um, seven years old, taller than you and something that mm-hmm. you're proud of or something that mm-hmm. that kind of works in that it has a pulley and it lifts or does the thing you wanted it to, right? So mm-hmm. I think that that them having that sense of accomplishment and the sense of agency that's included in using heavy things mm-hmm. um, and kind of going through something together right so being in that in that the 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 challenge of communicating or i'm going to tell you how to do this thing and then you're going to do it um Mm -hmm. is really interesting and so so i uh it's been really rewarding and we've learned a lot from the institutions who who are with the kids who see them kind of at the beginning of the year and the end of the year and they see them you know in these exercises but then the impacts are are playing out throughout the the social life of the students yeah for Um, sure that's um um, that's hopefully what we're trying to get at in in our uh class structure that we're doing this with with having a a prompt of some kind you know something that is culturally valuable that creates some space for everybody to show up but also gives them something to explore or a possible destination suggests a possible mm-hmm. destination um, without having to be assertive about build a this um, and yeah. so and I and from what I understand from Jack I think that's that's going fairly well that there's room for that in the room um, and that that it's appreciated when when especially to get a group on board what we know from theater is that when people certainly understand the the core narrative thread, of a thing then audiences and actors alike get on board and are streaming towards something together and i and and uh without necessarily having to go through the exercise of intellectually fully processing everything or emotionally fully processing everything to get on that same page they just get it because that story thread is there um so presenting that out there and, and, and giving them that sense is a is is what we're starting with but i'm also hearing just in in other ways that you've described this that the uh, that narrative thread can also emerge so that that exploring it from the perspective of uh, the piece itself and seeing what emerges from the interaction of these two pieces and how they interact with those two or whatever that's a whole uh, other branch of the the socially interactive piece that um, I need to make sure that we build in going forward because that's really exciting that they actually discover the thread as it goes yeah yeah I think that the there's um the the kind of working together uh can be a like a, a a building experience without really realizing you may not be on the same page in terms of story like i've seen mm-hmm. that a number of times where if you and i might be working together for a while making this thing and in my mind this is a we're building a a, a bird critter um antelope that's going to go on an adventure to save a princess. And in your yeah. mind, we might be building like, um, you know, a container vessel staff for Aladdin to yeah. go or whoever goes underwater. It's not Aladdin. I'm confusing all my Disney things. <laughs> but you know what? So there's. But this that's is just to your say, point. That's exactly what happens. It's, and, and they which go, yes. I find fascinating. Yeah. And yeah. children will be building together for an hour and and in the end realize that they were not playing the same story. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Kaz. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and it's it's great. And it's, 
Yeah, we're, I think it's already begun and the fun is already there. And I can see this becoming a really, really important part of what we do. So uh, I'm really thrilled that we've had the time. Thank you so much.